She was the victim of a homicide. She really looked like somebody someone would miss. Regardless of whether or not you know the identity of the victims, they were still victims. Everybody deserves to have their name returned to them. It, it was like boom, boom, boom. It was like a domino effect. I'm Sheriff Corner, Donnie Youngblood. This is a story about Jane Doe, number five. This is a story about a 39-year-old cold case. This is a story about technology, perseverance, and collaboration. This is a story about murder, but not forgotten. Today, I really want to introduce you to Shirley Ann Suze, better known to us as Jane Doe, number five, 1980. Jane Doe came to us on July 14, 1980. She was the victim of a homicide. She was located in an orchard just off Highway 99 in Delano, just north of Bakersfield. When I looked at the crime scene photos, she really looked like somebody someone would miss. She was neat and clean in appearance. Um, she was dressed as though she were going out somewhere. But what I really noticed is that she had um, white kid style tennis shoes. She came back to the coroner's office and she had an exam. We completed fingerprints. We didn't find anything about her family. Sheriff's detectives completed their investigation and over the years we had not a single inquiry about her and the case grew cold. In 2008, that was really our first big lead. And that was when we were contacted by Department of Justice, indicating that they had uh, gotten a hit off of the specimens sent to them at the time of the exam in 1980. It came back linking her to Wilson Chusette. A composite drawing was done of what Jane Doe looked like uh, that was circulated in the media. The other distinctive thing is she had colored tattoos on her forearms and that was not very common for a female in 1980 and despite all of the media interest there were still no inquiries about her. Then in about 2013 or 14 I received a phone call one day from Ventura County DA investigator Steve Rhodes. We were tasked with investigating the 1980 murder of a young woman whose body was dumped in the parking lot of Westlake High School. And as we worked on that case, we discovered that a CODIS connection to another murder in Kern County. So we contacted the Sheriff's Department in Kern County and adopted their case and we ran a parallel investigation. Since I have to put on the, the evidence related to the Kern County case anyway, why not just do one trial and save both counties a lot of work? It, it never really mattered to me that we didn't know their identity. You know, what we could prove absolutely is that they were people. And I, I think this is just another example of why, regardless of whether or not you know the identity of the victims, they were still victims. Uh, victims of a horrible crime and they died in a, in a horrible way all alone and nobody knew and, and those investigators never gave up. I got a call in uh, 2018 indicating that Wilson Chusette had been convicted of the murders of both women and it was really shortly after that Steve called me and uh, suggested that maybe uh, we should do a genealogy DNA since neither of these women had ever been identified. I reached out to the Doe Project, who I became familiar with by uh, going online and reviewing missing persons and unidentified victims. Asked them if they would pick up Jane Doe Ventura and attempt to identify her. They agreed. The DNA Doe Project was founded in 2017. Um, it was incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit. The mission of the organization is to return the names to the nameless 
and identify John and Jane Doe's through using genetic genealogy. We had a DNA profile, but the genealogy DNA requires uh, a different kind of profile. So I made a request for the crime scene clothing. Really all I did at that point was assist Don with which sample from the victim might be have the best DNA to move forward and we kind of settled on the blouse and so it's just a series of steps that you take the sample through to get the DNA out of the cloth, out of the blood and you're really left with just a very small amount of clear liquid in the bottom of a tube that looks like a drop or two of water and that's where all your DNA is and that sample is what was sent to um, the genealogy lab. And by May of 2019, the lab was able to deliver the data file to our bioinformatics expert, who was able to turn around and upload that information to a website called GEDmatch, which is where we do the majority of our research. When we uploaded, we actually had zero matches. And by September of 2019, we had a new top match upload and opt-in. Through their efforts, they had been able to identify her to the Cree Nation um, in Canada. And they worked it as far as they could, but then it wasn't enough to really move further. We put an appeal out on Facebook and we named the location where we thought she came from, hoping that someone would recognize her. Ten days later, we had someone contact DNA Doe Project, um, and she thought that this was her aunt. As soon as it said that she had bloodlines, her DNA is traced back to Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and the state of Montana, I said, that's my aunt. With Shirley, she was always like I said, very meticulous, very uh, like a creature of habit. Uh, she would send birthday cards and Christmas cards to my grandmother until 79 or 80, the cards quit. And my, my grandmother told us that something must have happened that we need to go and look for my aunt. We searched the hospitals, the, the different uh, bars, we went to the parks, we went um, to the graveyards. I mean, we did this over a number of years after that. And uh, I did the same in uh, Seattle. Her uh, biological mother made us promise to her that we would keep looking for Shirley and bring her home. I can't do this anymore. It was draining. It was draining me emotionally. It was like, I, I just finally let it go. And then all of a sudden it falls right in my lap a few days later. I just started talking to her about the history and what had happened. I really felt like that was probably going to be her. But then she went on and, and said, yeah, she had this thing about um, clean white shoes. And at that point, I just knew that it, it probably had to be her. I uploaded my DNA and matched her DNA with mine and we confirmed that she was within the range of an aunt and niece. It was a multitude of emotions. One relief that I, I lived up to a promise I had made. I thought I would go to my grave with that promise. Uh, two, glad that we found her but very, very sad that we lost her many years ago. Yeah, Kern County Jane Doe may be one of the first cases of indigenous peoples being solved through genetic genealogy. And the lesson here, don't ever give up. 
no matter what what's going on. If you got a victim of a crime and that crime's unsolved, never stop solving it. And the fact that we were able to identify uh, Jane Doe Kern County is remarkable. And I'm, I'm certainly hopeful that uh, Jane Doe Ventura County gets identified soon. It was a collaboration of a lot of people. Our does become like parts of our family while, we're, while yes. these cases are being worked on. And yeah. we, we feel very close to them and really an obligation to return their name to them because everybody deserves that. Cold cases can be solved. Family members never forget, nor should we. During Crime Victims Week, I'm pleased to highlight the identification of Shirley Suse. Thank you very much.